Revelation chapter 6 and beginning from verse 12, we'll read, I'll read down to verse 17, Revelation chapter 6, so follow along with me, verse 12, and I beheld when he had opened the sixth seal, and lo, there was a great earthquake, and the sun became black as sackcloth of hair, and the moon became as blood. And the stars of heaven fell unto the earth, even as a fig tree casteth her untimely figs, when she is shaken of a mighty wind. And the heaven departed as a scroll, when it is rolled together, and every mountain and island were moved out of their places. And the kings of the earth, and the great men, and the rich men, and the chief captains, and the mighty men, and every bondman, every freeman, hid themselves in the dens and in the rocks of the mountains, and said to the mountains and the rocks, Fall on us and hide us from the face of him that sitteth on the throne and from the wrath of the Lamb. For the great day of his wrath is come, and who shall be able to stand? Uh, who shall be able to stand? And so tonight I just want to share with you a subject I've entitled the message, The World's Great Prayer Meeting. The World's Great Prayer Meeting. Let's pray. Father, bless our time as we look at this portion of scripture, and Lord, as we just spend a few moments thinking about uh, this time period and all that it's going to entail, Lord, and, uh, we just pray that you bless us as we are so thankful that we will miss it, Lord. I just pray that you minister to us as we look at your word tonight. And we ask this, of course, in the precious name we pray. Amen. Our nation. Believe it or not, it does have a national day of prayer. I couldn't tell you what day it is. I believe it's in September. I could be wrong on that. Uh, maybe it's in May. I'm not sure. Um, but our, our nation does have a national day of prayer. And I believe it's become somewhat just a mockery, to be honest with you. Um, when you have limitations on whose name, and whose name you can pray in, I would say that is a mockery. And as long as you pray in a a general God term, that's okay, but once you bring in the name of Jesus, they, they don't want that. Um, but our, our nation has a day of prayer. And uh, here at our church, we believe in prayer meetings, and you're here tonight because you believe in it too, and we have that emphasized here on Wednesday nights. But in our, in our country, there was a time in our nation when prayer meetings were important. You can read history books about the uh, the Continental Congress and the, the beginning meetings that took place around the, when the Constitution was first ran, and even many years after that, to be honest with you, for quite a long time, uh, the Congress would open up with a, with a word of prayer, and many times mentioned and proclaiming Jesus Christ as, as Savior. Um, so at one time in our nation, prayer meetings were important in, amongst uh, our, our nation. They were at one time important amongst churches. I mean, everywhere you went, you would have a small church like this in a different town having a prayer meeting. And many churches nowadays don't have Wednesday night Bible studies prayer meetings. And so even in many churches in our nations, prayer meetings have been thrown off to the side. And many people may have a, even a Wednesday night service, but then they leave out the, the meeting together and the prayer uh, meeting part of it and just do a Bible study. But at one time in our nation, prayer meeting was an important thing amongst our churches. At one time, it was an important thing amongst our government, like I mentioned. And then you read some of the stories of, of the men there and the, the prayers that they offered up. I have a great book by, written by David Barton. It's called Rit, Rit, Original Intent. And it talks about uh, many things about the courts. And about the one chapter I love is the religious nature of the founding fathers. And he gives so many quotes of, of, of the men back then that were um, proclaiming uh, Christ as Savior and, and, and magnifying Him. But at one time, prayer was even a part of our early government. At one time, prayer was a, prayer meetings were a part of our society. It wasn't too long ago that every day at the beginning of school day that a teacher would say a prayer amongst the, the the students there, even in a, in a public high school, a public school, and so that was allowed. And and then many people, uh, families made prayer meeting a big deal at the dinner table. They would spend a the time and not just say God bless this food, thank you for it, amen, but they would actually sit around the dinner table, hold hands, and it would be uh, uh, 
somewhat more lengthy prayer than um, it has become. Just say grace. Not even just say grace, but you know, you, you actually have dinner time was prayer time in many homes uh, and one, at one time in our nation. And so in our society, we've seen that going astray in our government. We've seen it uh, going astray even in our churches. We've seen it going astray. But tonight, I want to bring it to, uh, to your attention to the world's great prayer meeting. The world's great prayer meeting. You see, during this time in our, in our scripture, uh, we see there's going to be many, many disasters on the earth. Of course, it's the sixth seal. This is after the rapture has happened. We've been raptured, taken up, and we're, we're in heaven with, with Christ. Boy, that day seems like it's coming closer and closer. I heard on the news today that uh, Russia was laying some bombs or shooting uh, at certain places in Syria and being right next border to uh, Israel and just all that prophecy of, of Ezekiel of that happening it just seems like we're closer and closer and closer yeah. uh, and so that, that's exciting and, but one day that, rap, that trumpet will sound and we'll be raptured out of here and then the earth the world will go through a seven year tribulation period and we won't go on to the details of the, of the seals here but the one that we are reading about in verse uh, chapter 6 verse 12 is the sixth seal and this sixth seal is uh, a description of some natural disasters, a description of um, just uh, activity in our in our in our universe, in our in, in outer space, and just um, amazing things that are going to happen in the skies and in the the universe at this time. And so we read those verses, and I just briefly go over them again before we look at this uh, great prayer meeting here. But it talks about in verse 12 how there was a great earthquake, and this earthquake was so great that it talks about in verse um, uh, 14 that the, every mountain and island were moved out of their places. You talk about a, a, a Earthquake that cannot be measured on the Richter scale. Well, this would be that. This would be an earthquake that was so power, uh, so powerful, it was so it's such a great magnitude that uh, it can't even be measured. It just does for uh, horrible damage to uh, the earth. So there's a great earthquake. It talks about how the sun became black as sackcloth of hair, and we know that the daylight is going to be limited to one fourth of the day during this time period. And it's actually going to help those that are, are saved, that have received a Christ and have refused the mark of the beast to stay alive. And so it's going to be a blessing to have less daylight. But the sun has become black at this time. Um, and then we also see that the moon became as blood. So here's another blood moon that's going to happen during the tribulation period. And we've had, what, four this, this year? And, uh, has it been just this year? Last two years. Last two years, and so you know we we've seen the you know precursor, basically the the, the sample of what's going to be like during the tribulation period. But there's going to be a blood moon during the tribulation period. Uh, also in verse 13, and the stars of heaven fell onto the earth, and I believe this is referring to most likely asteroids or meteorites that are going to shower down upon the earth at this time. So it's just going to be a uh, chasm, chasmosotic, or uh, chasmolytic, uh, what's the word, uh, <laughs> yeah, chas <laughs> chasmic, uh, um, um, I thought there was more to it than that, chasmic, um, what's that? Cataclysmic. Yeah, there you go, cataclysmic, did I say it right, <laughs> cataclysmic uh, event that just brings uh, just travail and disorder to our universe. Where the earthquake is so powerful, the sun becomes as black as sackcloth, the moon has become as blood, the stars of heaven fall to the earth, uh, raining down uh, meteorites and asteroids. The fig tree casts her untimely figs when she's shaken with a, a mighty wind. And it's just going to be a, a force of, of uh, wind that is unlike anything we've seen here. And the heaven departed as a scroll when it was rolled together. I don't, I can't, I can't even picture that. I mean, I, 
I, I, I've been, I meditated on that verse and I try to picture my mind. What would it look like if heaven, and I still can't get a good uh, glimpse of in, in my imagination what that would look like, but um, every mountain and island were moved out of their place. And it is so bad, it is, the, the, earth, the world is in such uh, disorder and destruction is so uh, horrific on the earth that in verse 15 it says, The kings of the earth and the great men and the rich men and the chief captains and the mighty men and every bond man and free man hid themselves in the dens and in the rocks of the mountains and said to the mountains and rocks, Fall on us and hide us from the face of him that sitteth on the throne. And so there, as they're hiding in those dens and in the rocks and in the caves of those mountains, their prayer is, I just pray that these mountains and rocks just fall on us and hide up so that we can be hid from the wrath of the Lamb. And so the world's great prayer meeting will happen one day. And it's going to be a prayer meeting that is not going to be a joyous one for the world. But one day, all the resistance to prayer that's happening now on earth, one day they'll have no choice. They'll be screaming and crying out in agony for something uh, supernatural to happen to uh, keep them from the, the wrath of the Lamb. And so a couple things here when I think of this prayer meeting that they're going to have here in these dens and in these caves. The first thing is it's a prayer meeting of the sinful, obviously. It's a prayer meeting of the sinful. And when I mean sinful, I mean those who have rejected Christ in order to receive the mark of the beast at this time. And it's the prayer meeting of the sinful, the lost, the unsaved. And I don't know what that does to you, but that, that, that actually makes me feel sorry for them. It makes me have compassion on them that, wow, they had, if only they would have received Jesus Christ. And now they're going through this. And now they're in such a position. Now they're praying for suicide. They're praying for the rocks and the mountains to fall upon them. It's a prayer meeting of the sinful. And, of course, the Bible teaches that God doesn't hear the prayer of sinners uh, unless it's for salvation. But uh, the Bible, I don't have the verses here written down before me, but I can get to them if you're interested. But that is the Bible truth that God, uh, the ear is shut to uh, um, the wicked. And so uh, this prayer meeting of the sinful is a feeble attempt, grasp to try to get a supernatural intervention during this time. And that just makes me so glad that God answers prayer. Thank, we ought to be thankful that God has cleansed us from our sin. You know, when you were forgiven of all your sins and God cleansed you of your sins, you were granted access to the throne of God. You were granted access to the, the Holy of Holies. And now you can come boldly to the throne of grace because your sins have been forgiven. And we ought to never take that for granted. That we have access to God Almighty. I mean the one that created everything that there is. The one that there's nothing too hard for Him. We have access to Him. And we can go to Him at any time in our, in our lives. At any moment we can go to Him. We don't have to run to a confessional booth. We don't have to run to a priest and allow Him to grant us access to speak to our Heavenly Father. We have the privilege of being a priesthood of God. We believe in the priesthood of the believer that... Uh, the believer is his own priest. He can run straightly to God and, and talk to God one-on-one. -on -one. And thank God for that fact that we can go to God in prayer. These lost, unsaved, sinful men, I would say this, was, this would be a pretty poor uh, prayer meeting. Pretty sad prayer meeting. They're just speaking to the air. They have no hope. They have no, they've already received the mark of the beast and uh, made their decision and they have no hope of being saved now and they're just asking for us, uh, for death. So this is a prayer meeting of the sinful. But then also this is a prayer meeting of the fearful. Because you notice in the verse, um, the way they cry out here, they're obviously afraid Verse 16, and said 
to the mountains and rocks fall on us and hide us from the face of him that sitteth on the throne and from the wrath of the Lamb. They were feel, fearful of God's judgment. They were feel, fearful of the Lamb. Afraid of the judgment of God. Those today who reject the Lamb, one day will be fearful of that Lamb. Just a couple, of, uh, was it a couple weeks ago? Yeah, two weeks ago we went uh, apple picking and we went to Love Apple Farm and you could go in and, and pet the, uh, uh, what is that thing called, the big thing? Uh, llama, you can pet the llama, you can feed the ghost. There's two lambs there and they pretty much didn't pay any attention to us at all. They just got there eating the grass. And, but, you know, we had no fear of the lamb. I mean, some of, there was one black goat that was a little bit aggressive, and he wanted to steal all the food from the other goats, and, but he wasn't, I don't think, of any fear of death or that, that threatening. Um, the llama, just because of the size, might be a little fearful, but the lamb was the least, uh, had, we, we had no uh, fear whatsoever of uh, being around that lamb. And, you know, those who reject that land today, one day they will be afraid of that land in the future. And this is a prayer meeting of the fearful. And thank God we do not have to be fearful. Did you know uh, the one of the biggest thing that is just hindering, not just uh, unsaved, but Christians, is fear. There's so many people, I mean born again Christians, who are fearful of What's going to happen tomorrow? Fearful of losing a job. Fearful of, of, of getting cancer. Fearful of uh, uh, some type of uh, attack on their family. Or fearful of some sort of uh, uh, trouble or problem that's going to come into their life. And the Bible gives us a cure for that. Philippians 4, verse 6 and 7. Be anxious for nothing, but in all things do, uh, in all things do prayer. And I'm messing up terribly. But all things through prayer and thanksgiving, make your supplications known unto God. And I don't know if that was a KJV version or BIV version, but uh, uh, but that's the cure for anxiousness: is bringing all things to God in prayer, casting all our care upon Him, for He cares for us. But there's so many Christians that are living in fear and so are anxious and fretful. And this was a prayer meeting of the fearful. But did you know we don't have to be fearful? God has not given us a spirit of fear. And the book of Psalms, verse 37, tells us over and over, uh, not just chapter 37, but many places in the Psalm, uh, talks, tells us not to, to fret not, to fret not. In other words, like, it's okay. Calm down. Take a deep breath. Don't be afraid. God's in control. And as a Christian, we can have that peace that passes all understanding. We don't have to be fearful. These folks here have no choice. They don't have no peace within them. They have no uh, answer to that uh, spirit of fear that is taking place during this time. And so they are fear. It's a prayer meeting of the sinful, a prayer meeting of the fearful. This is also a prayer meeting of the famous. You notice what it says there in verse uh, chapter six, verse twelve. Uh, not 12, verse um, 15. And the kings of the earth, and the great men, and the rich men, and the chief captains, and the mighty men, every bondman and every free man. So this is also a prayer meeting of the famous. Think of these Hollywood superstars. Think of all these, these, uh, you know, these famous people in our country today. Did you know one day they're going to they're gonna go to prayer? And it may not be, if they don't, by God's grace and God's mercy, uh, uh, see the truth and can get saved. One day during the tribulation period, these folks are going to have a prayer meeting that's sad and that's uh, of no value. And that is praying that they would be uh, killed in order to re, uh, in order to be protected from the wrath of the Lamb. This is a prayer meeting of the famous. And I just want to say here, did you know God is not a respecter of persons? You know, do you think you think uh, Bill Gates impresses God? He's the richest man in the world. You think, or at least in America, uh, probably the world. I'm not sure about that, but uh, but you think he impresses God? You think uh, I don't know. Think of a famous person. Um, you think LeBron James impresses God? The, you know, he's uh, you know, arguably right now the greatest 
basketball player in, in the world. Um, um, what about some famous actor? I don't know. You can think of even my famous actor. I'll give you Ross Sil Sil Sylvester Stallone. <laughs> uh, now, you know, you think, you, and I, I hope he gets saved because I like the guy, but I doubt that he is. Um, but, you know, think of all the actors, you think of all the musicians, you think of all the famous people, you think of all the senators and maybe even the president, uh, if, he's, if he's still uh, on the throne when this happens. And uh, it's a good chance that, that it may be him. But you think of all the mighty men, the, the people that are in authority, the people that have some power, they're all going to be powerless at this time. Begging and pleading for the rocks and caves of all of them because they're fearful of the judgment of the land of the of the land. But God is not a respect of persons. And just remember that. You know, God is willing to do for you what he has done for others. We just read a song by Martin Luther Martin Luther. You know, you think that God is you know, God did great things for Martin Luther. I mean, I, so there's certain things that I still disagree with Martin Luther on doctrinally, but as far as, you know, answers to prayer, he's had known answers to prayers. God has answered to prayer. It was like a great man like George Mueller. And I think of uh, missionaries like David Livingston and Adoniram Judson and so many others, William Carey. And think of the great men of faith whom God did great things to. Is God a respect of persons? No, God is willing to do for us what he was, what he, he would do for it for others. Uh, it, just, it matters how much we are surrendered, how bad we want God to use us. But God is not a respecter of persons. And even with the rich and famous, they too can't buy the way out of this one. They will end up in this world's great prayer meeting, begging for death. And so this prayer meeting that takes place in the tribulation period is a, a very real thing that's going to take place. And it doesn't compare to the prayer meetings that we have here. Our prayer meetings are filled with born-again people, so that makes a difference right there. I believe our prayer meetings are filled with people that want to do what's right, people that are, want to serve Christ. But so many churches have given up on prayer meetings. And I wanted to read something to you that I thought was... Uh, um, a little bit funny. Uh, I said, not funny <laughs> because uh, funny and sad both at the same time. If I can find it here, hang on there. Um, the obituary of Mrs. Prayer Meeting. The obituary of Mrs. Prayer Meeting. Mrs. Prayer Meeting died recently at the first neglected church on Worldly Avenue. Born many years ago in the midst of great revivals, she was a strong, healthy child, fed largely on testimony and Bible study, soon growing into the worldwide prominent, and was one of the most influential members of the famous church family. For the, most, for the past several years, Sister Prayer Meeting has been failing in health, gradually wasting away until... Uh, until rendered helpless by stiffness of knees, coldness of heart, inactivity, and weakness of purpose and willpower. At the last, she was but a shadow of her former happy self. Her last whispered words were inquiries concerning the strange absence of her loved ones now busy in the marts of trade and places of worldly amusements. Experts, including Dr. Works, Dr. Reform, and Dr. Joyner, disagreed as to the cause of her fatal illness, administering large doses of organization, socials, uh, contests, and drives, but to no avail. A post-mortem a post showed that a deficiency of spiritual food coupled with lack of faith, heartfelt religion, and general support were contributing causes. Only a few were present at her death, sobbing over memories of her past beauty and power, in honor of her going, the church doors will be closed on Wednesday nights, save the third Wednesday night of each month, when the Ladies' Pink Lemonade Society serves refreshments to the men's handball team. And so sad because, you know what? 
In many churches, that is a testimony. You think we have a handful here today? And I know other churches who would say Wednesday nights are low. And I know there's many reasons because of work and, and so forth, but there are a lot of other reasons just because people don't put the emphasis on it. They don't put the emphasis on getting together as a church and praying. And it's just fitting that I was pre I'm preaching this message and then uh, something happens where I gotta leave and, and just the way uh, Satan tries to work. But so, I, so I pray that you will stay and spend some time in prayer. But this prayer meeting all across our country has died. And I believe with all my heart, unless God's people, unless Bible-believing churches get back to spirit-filled times of prayer, whether it be a Wednesday night prayer meeting, whether it be a Friday night getting together praying for a couple hours, whether it be a Saturday night uh, praying for an hour, whatever, the, the day doesn't really matter, but the act of praying and getting together and uh, bringing uh, our ministry before God is so vital. But many places have gone away with prayer meetings. It used to be common amongst our churches. It used to be even common in our government. It used to be common place in our society and in our homes, but not no longer. But well, one day there will be a great prayer meeting that will be different than any other prayer meeting because it will be sinful, fearful, great and famous people with one desperate plea for God to kill them before and to be killed before the wrath of the Lamb comes to full, uh, full force. Isaac Newton gave a testimony of the wonders in the sky. And here in the sixth seal, we see the wonders of the sky. We see the moon turning blood as blood. We see the, the sun becoming as black cloth. We see the, 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 the earth shaking and moving the mountains and islands. The stars falling, whether it be asteroids and meteorites falling from the sky. And then this great prayer meeting. Isaac Newton, one of the greatest scientists who ever lived, gave this witness to his faith in God. He said, I can take my telescope and look millions and millions of miles into space, but I cannot lay my telescope aside, or, but I can lay my telescope aside and go into my room and shut the door and get down on my knees in earnest prayer, and I see more of heaven and get closer to God than I can when assisted by the, all the telescopes and material agencies on earth. And Isaac Newton realized how important prayer was. Prayer brought him into the meeting place with God. Prayer brought him into the presence of Almighty God. And he could see more of heaven and he could be closer to God through prayer than any telescope could bring him to the outer space and, and the universe. And the thought is here tonight, how close are we to God? Are we going to take advantage of the important privilege and opportunity to pray? Or are we going to be like these people and just give all a feeble, vain effort to prayer for just to save our own skin? Or are we going to make much of prayer? And when we do make much of prayer, we get closer to God. We're drawn to His presence. Boy, that's what we need. We need to get back to the spirit of prayer. We need to make sure that in our own lives, we don't rob ourselves of the peace. We don't rob ourselves of the confidence in God Almighty that yeah, He's in control. He's, he's on the throne. He's the sovereign God of the universe. And He loves me. I know that. And I know he's going to take care of me. I may not understand how. It may look insurmountable right now. It may look like my name's already been written on the tombstone, but I still trust that God and his amazing grace and, and provision will come through for me and will uh, provide for me. 
And when we bring all our cares, as the Bible says, casting all our cares upon Him, when we lay, lay all our fears and our anxieties and all our problems, trials at His feet, we can walk away with a sense of joy and gladness and hope that God heard me. And now it's His problem. I left it there with Him. And trust that He will provide and take care of it. And so prayer meeting, I hope this church never gets to the point where we have to close the doors. You know, I know it's going to get tough with, with winter coming and the snow. So, you know, we got to use wisdom and, and we will close it when, when the weather's bad. But as far as just giving up on prayer meetings and that, let's not bother anymore. We haven't really seen that many answers to prayers. One answer to prayer, I think, is enough. We've seen that, so let's never give up on it. Let's not become uh, a church that has Mrs. Prayer Meetings obituary on its bulletin board, okay? Father, we thank you for so much for your word. Lord, I do feel sorry for the people that are going to be here during the tribulation period. Lord, no prayer is going to save them from the wrath of the Lamb. Lord, once they place their faith in that Antichrist, they're doomed. And Lord, I feel sorry for these men and women that are going to meet here and beg and plead for rocks and the mountains to fall on them and, and cause, death, cause them death. Lord, help us to feel a burden for those that we know who are not believers to, get, to come to Christ. And then Lord, also help us to take full advantage of our awesome gift that you've given us of being able to go to the throne of God boldly and ask of you anything that our hearts uh, crave and desire. Lord, knowing that you'll bless us and take care of us. Lord, thank you for your word. Bless it tonight as we leave here. Give us safety as we travel home. Bless those that do want to spend